What's going on, everybody? Aaron Bennett here. Celsius AMA recap for April 2nd, 2021. Let's get it. So the guest here is somebody who has been working with Celsius for a while, but he officially joined the team not too long ago working on the legal side of things. So Celsius has a new website. Uh, you can see here there is a, a little chart where Celsius and the competitors showing you how much more Celsius is paying. And so Alex says that Celsius will never cut the rates like what happened with BlockFi uh, that, that happened on April 1st. They will never do that to us. So the net transfers for last week were double what they usually are because of what happened with BlockFi. So right now, we're adding about $800 million in assets every single month. So right now, they're at $13.9 billion in assets under management. Soon, they will be 14 bill. So in comparison, Aave has $6.6 .6 billion in locked-in value. And Alex said that around 10% of all of Aave's liquidity is with Celsius or Celsius is contributing that. So what Alex is saying is that Celsius has twice as small of a market cap. Uh, so Aves is twice as big their market cap, but Celsius has twice the amount of assets in management. And one of the differences is that Ave is locked in to that DeFi liquidity pool model. So they can't deploy people's assets to institutions like what Celsius does. So that's one of the reasons why Celsius is much more obviously diversified, but uh, they can earn a lot more money and pay the community a lot more money. So Alex says also like Binance's market cap is around $50 billion. Celsius's is around $2 billion. And he's like, who has a better business model, right? Who's paying more to the community? Binance, he says, pays around 20% to the community. And we know that Celsius pays 80 so he's talking about the difference between uh, the Keynesian model, uh, which is where you come in and you bail people out versus the Austrian economic model, where you let the market handle whatever is going on. You don't intervene by a central government. So bail in is when there's a problem and the, you know, the people who are members of the bank, if it's a bank that's a problem or that's in trouble, they have to bail the bank in. So they have to like give the money to the bank from the people's money. So for example, what happened in Cyprus not too long ago, they just took 20% of whatever balance you had in your bank account and it was it was gone. They took that money from your bank. So now he's talking about how ridiculous the FDIC is because they're the people who are in charge of whether or not you know people's accounts get wiped 20% uh, or so. And they're also the ones that are supposedly the insurance companies. So the insurance company is also in charge of potentially taking your money. So basically, Alex is saying that the FDIC insurance is total BS and will not protect you. So here, you can see there's less than $60 billion in the entire FDIC. But me looking at this personally, uh, it says that the quarterly net income is $60 billion or 59.9. So I'm not quite sure if this is uh, all the money that the FDIC has, even though that's what Alex said. So here's an article from Insider saying how nine banks are exposed to $200 trillion worth of derivatives. So Alex said that the Fed is not the one that prints most of the money in the world, which is pretty interesting. He said that it's the banks because the Fed can give money to these banks. The banks don't need to keep any of that money in the actual bank. They can just lend it out, create credit, and basically create new money. So what happened was September of 2019, no bank was willing to lend to any other bank. So Alex said, even before the flash crash that happened in 2020, that is where a lot of these problems started was uh, the end of 2019. And this article was actually from 2012. So this is from 2008 to 2012. They have that much money uh, that they're exposed to. Now it's obviously a ton more. And Alex also said that there is no way to know how many dollars are in circulation. Whereas with Bitcoin, you can do a checksum and know exactly how many. So Alex said that the Fed is not owned by the government, that the banks own the Fed. So Alex thinks that April 15th, 16th, and 17th, a lot of Bitcoin is going to go down in value. Uh, because of the Coinbase IPO. So they mentioned the Bittrex competition where you can earn some sell. And now they're talking about how amazing it is to earn yield on gold. So Alex thinks that it's still a good idea to diversify into gold, even though gold has not been performing that well. So Alex is talking about the difference between keeping your money in the bank, which is basically an IOU where if there were something to happen, you would not get your money back. You'd be last in line versus buying a stable coin like USDC, which is a trust company. So there is no IOU. One USDC is backed by the treasury. So buying USDCs or buying a stable coin like that 
and then giving it to Celsius to earn 10% plus yield, Alex is basically saying it's much safer than keeping your money in the bank. So this is who's on the podcast as the guest. He's from Paul Weiss. It says Celsius hires a Paul Weiss attorney as general counsel. So he says that one of the reasons they brought him on is to make sure that they do things the right way in Celsius. So it's not about doing everything the fastest, like being the first or you know the next quickest company to launch a certain feature. He's saying that Celsius is really built for the long term. And his job is to make sure that everything is done correctly, the right way, and managing risk and opportunity. So this company, Sovos, is providing automated tax info for Celsius Network. So they're going through a couple of the smaller clips, the cell bytes. Uh, this one is the CEO of GMO. We had Tim Draper on, uh, who was super surprised that Celsius had over 82,000 Bitcoin. So a couple questions about taxes. Uh, he says it's worth paying a couple hundred dollars for a service to help you do taxes uh, that helps you calculate uh, losses to offset your gains. This question says, do you think there's going to be a demand for crypto lawyers? And he says, yes, and they are hiring if you have that experience. So somebody asked if they may acquire other CFI or DeFi companies, and they said that is uh, definitely a possibility. So next week, they're launching a major tier one exchange, and it's going to be from Asia. So somebody asked uh, Alex, what are his three largest crypto holdings? He said Cell is going to be the first. And then Bitcoin and ETH, he said, are about the same. So they increased the uh, the OTC back to $25,000. It was at $5,000 just for a little bit, back at twenty five. dollars And Alex is working with different exchanges to lower the withdrawal rate. So right now for Liquid and Bittrex, it's uh, I believe like five to seven cell. So it's kind of expensive to withdraw your cell from those exchanges, but they're trying to work with them to get it lower. So Zach asked, how do you keep that good relationship with uh, the regulators? And what they're saying is that you have to be incredibly transparent, like with the FCA in England and also with the regulatory agencies in the United States. And uh, being transparent, letting them know exactly what you're up to is how to stay compliant and on their good side. So the promo code, if you transfer $25,000, you're going to get $500 if you keep it there for 90 days. So the promo code is UN underscore B-L-O-C-K. So the new promo code for referring your friends is if they deposit $400 or more, you both are going to get $40 in DAI. D-A-I, it's a stable coin. Uh, they have to keep that deposit for 30 days, I believe. And another promo for new users is BTC40. So about NFTs, he said that right now there needs to be more substance. Alex and the lawyer think it's just not the right time to get into NFTs, especially if Celsius's goal is to provide a stable and safe yield for all of us. So right now, He's not in favor of adding that to any type of any of the wallets or adding it to a diversification uh, portfolio for Celsius, but he is a fan of NFTs, so probably in the future. So somebody asked about how can you uh, put a beneficiary into your Celsius app and how is that going to work if you pass away? And they're saying that uh, they are working on it. They're just following the law right now, but it will be soon available where it'll just be like, you know, passing on a retirement account or an insurance policy. Uh, but right now it's not available, but they are very much working on it. All right, guys, that is the end of the AMA for April 2nd, 2021. Subscribe to my station and Celsius station if you like this kind of content. So thanks for watching. Thanks for taking the time, as they say. Until next time, talk with you soon and bye for now.